gratitude and honor. Gratitude and honor. Hallelujah. Gratitude and honor. And I would like you to pay attention carefully. Because most times we think we are showing gratitude to God, but we are not. And we also feel or think that we honor God, but we are not. Gratitude is honor. Gratitude is honor. I mean, when you show gratitude, either to your fellow man or to God, you are, sh- you are also giving that person honor and reverence. If your gratitude is without honor, then it's not gratitude. Many today feel that they are showing gratitude, but they are not. You know, hardly today you see somebody that will say, I have pride. Abi? Hardly, you know, me, I don't have pride. Oh, no, what is pride there? But do you know that many Christians, many Christians exhibit pride unknowingly to them? Pride is not until you boast, pride is not until you raise your shoulder, pride is not until you brag. When you fail to honor who deserves honor, it transcends to pride. And many of us have been swimming in pride without knowing. So, we're going to talk about gratitude and also going to talk about honor. Then you fuse it together, you realize that they are the same thing. Show me a man of honor. I will show you a man of gratitude. Show me a man of gratitude. And I'm definitely going to show you a man of honor. We will not have lasting blessing, lasting favor, lasting grace, lasting mercy. Name them. The list is lengthy. If we don't exhibit honor and gratitude. I mean, nothing will last in our hand and in our lives if we don't exhibit honor and gratitude. Favor won't last. People won't last. And even God's presence won't last if you come short of honor and gratitude. When you recognize God, you show appreciation to, on, in, for what he has done for you, indirectly you have honored God. See today, if we are raising prayers of warfare, every, this place, this wolf can come down. But if we are raising prayer of thanksgiving, everybody are quiet. That's pride. You say it's not pride, it's pride. Are you hearing me? Raising prayer of thanksgiving, this place is what? Quiet. There are many things that hinders your prayer. First of all, ingratitude. The first thing that hinders your prayer is what? Ingratitude. Pride. I've been telling you here. When you look at God, he said, we were all created in his own image. Put yourself in the, in the shoe of God and you understand how it feels to be dishonored or be disrespected. See today, we become serious and zealous, dedicated and committed, very prayerful when we need something from God. We put on energy. We spend time. We sacrifice everything when we are looking for something from God. But the moment we get it, the moment we get it, the entire anxiety the entire expression disappears. And the only thing you hear somebody say, thank you, Jesus. And that's all. (laughs) And you're now waiting next time. 
The next time you have issues, you now go back again with all amounts of commitment and promises to God. If you were to be you, what would be your response? Don't forget that the only difference between God and man is immortality and mortality. We are created in his own image. What would be your response? That's why sometimes it's easy to get something from God the first time. But the second, the third time seems to be delayed. Check well. There's an iota of pride. And there was an iota of pride when God helped you the first time. Many of us does not understand the concept of returning to thank God. Many of us does not understand the concept of returning to thank God. Now, what I'm talking about returning to thank God, I'm not talking about coming here to give testimony. It's a different thing. Okay? What you are doing here is a different thing. You may come here and give testimony, but you have not thanked God. Hope you know that. You may stand here and you are giving thanks, uh, giving testimony, but you have not thanked God. I mean, the same energy you put in to ask God for something, when you get it, also put the same energy to thank him. Are we together? The same energy. The same passion. Sacrifice you make when you're asking for something. Also, put the same energy while giving thanks. Anything you cannot do for yourself, no matter how little they look, show appreciation for it. Because if you were able to do it, you wouldn't have looked for help. The fact that you look for help showed that you're not able to do it. Some of us, you look for some, look at somebody now, please, man, can you borrow me 2,000? And they will give you 2,000 naira. When it's time for you to pay back, you now tell the person, what is 2,000? What is common 2,000 naira? You are shouting at me like that. You see the problem? If it was that easy, you would have had it that time. Show gratitude. Show appreciation. Even when that pride comes to make you say it, don't say it. Nah, I can't fail. Because when you don't show gratitude, you block the way for the next opportunity. I can the next time you get over 2,000. I can get 500. But because you did not show appreciation, you won't even see it. I mean, Gratitude gives you another opportunity. Tell your neighbor, gratitude gives you another opportunity. So every time you show gratitude, you have another opportunity. That means another opportunity is waiting for you on standby. Because you appreciated the first. The concept of returning is our problem. We should be humble enough to understand that God needs our appreciation. Even if he doesn't tell you. He needs it. He deserves it. Honey. He is worthy of it. Let's read the, bio, the story in the Bible. The book of Luke chapter 17 from verse 12. As he entered a village, 10 men with serious skin disease met him. They stood at a distance and raised their voices saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he told them, go and show yourself to the priest. And while they were going, while they were going, while they were going, they were healed. They didn't even get to the priest's house while they were going, they were healed. Get back to that verse 13 again. And raise their voices. And raise their voices. They didn't just talk. They raised their They shouted. They didn't hear, right? 
saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. They raised their voices when they needed that help. They raised their voices when they needed the healing. They raised their voices when they needed mercy. They raised their voices when they were desperate. They raised their voices when trouble came. Their voice was not down. At that time, they did not know maturity. At that time, they were not civilized. At that time, they were not calm because they needed something. At that time, they did not realize, no, you don't shout here. They shouted because they needed help. They raised their voices. Next verse. When he saw them, he didn't touch them. Because they raised their voices, he told them, go and show yourselves to the priests. And while they were going, they were healed. Next. But one of them, seeing that he was healed, return. Tell your neighbor, return. Seeing that he was healed, return. Our problem is here. Returning. How many of us have ever returned back to the place we sat down to pray? To sit down there and give thanks. Now you don't have time again. <laughs> you had time to stay in your parlor and pray in the night. But there's no time again to give thanksgiving at that same parlor. You wake up and lie on your bed and, and you cry and you shout. And when you got what you wanted, you had time to stick, lie on the same bed and show gratitude. Return. Maybe some of them had said, the nine men have said, oh, thank you Jesus, we are healed. And they were going. They didn't return to the place they raised their voice. They didn't return to raise that same voice in gratitude. They became mute and quiet because they got what they wanted. But I tell you, there's always another time. There may be another time, but there may not be another opportunity because gratitude is what will give you the opportunity. Trouble will give you time Gratitude will give you opportunity. Opportunity to be healed, to be blessed, and to be helped out of that trouble. And with a loud voice, have you seen the difference here? The same way he raised his voice to ask for help, with a loud voice, gave glory to who? To God. So, I think most of us now are, are, are guilty and fell down on his, on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was what? Not even a Jew. So not even a Jew. Not even people that have seen the blessings of God. Not even that have people that have seen this power. Not even them. A stranger. Someone that doesn't merit it. How did he know? He saw a difference and returned back immediately. The one that had the Jesus did not come back. And Jesus answering said, Where they not ten cleans? You think he doesn't know what he has done for you? Eh? He knows what he has done for you. He knows how, what he has done for you. He knows how many times he has helped you. Sometimes when you go back next and ask him for help, say, have I not, have I not helped you for two times now? Are you keeping it? What happened the last time I helped you? Imagine God just asking you, say, what happened the last time I helped you? I said, yes, I was helped. And he will ask you something like, when you came to me, you shouted, you jumped, you cried. But when you got what you wanted, what did you do? Nothing. 
You didn't jump again. You didn't cry again. Nothing. You only said, thank you, Jesus. And you left. He did not return. If you had done it that way, it means that you did not return. The main thing here is returning. Are you hearing me? It's what? Returning. Have you returned? Many of us have not returned. And if you don't return, it's pride. Don't forget, there will be another time, but there may not be another opportunity. If another time comes, another time happens, what will give you the opportunity is gratitude for the previous one. And Jesus answered and said, we did not ten claims, but we are the nine. It means God is interested in that opposition. He's interested. Otherwise, he would have just said, oh, it's okay, go, go, go. He said, but you guys were ten. We are the nine. Precisely, we are the nine. But I've seen you alone. You, not just you, you as a stranger. Where are the rest? They are not found that return. Again, they are not found that what returned to give glory to God. Save the stranger. Ah. Except this stranger. Jesus could see that this man is a stranger. But this man understood the concept of returning and gratitude. Or went back and said, Father, thank you. And the Bible says, he did that with a loud voice. And he said unto him, Arise and go thy way. Thy faith had made thee whole. A very important point. Thy faith had made thee whole. The remaining nine thought that it is over. You can be healed, but you are not made whole. Are we together? You can be restored. You are not still made whole. Whole means it can never happen in your life again. Someone can be sick. You go to church and you are healed. After one month, the sickness returns. Go and check what you did after that healing. A pastor can pray for you to be healed. Please, sir, sit down. A pastor can pray for you to be healed. But it's God that will make you whole after your gratitude. They were healed on their way. But the wholesomeness came when he returned to show gratitude. I mean, you are made whole in the place of gratitude. The remaining nine, we don't know about them again. But they might have gone back the sickness would have returned back to them. But the one that returned back had the opportunity to meet with Jesus Christ. And he had this word and affirmation that you are made whole. How many of us have been returning? You may start complaining, God, I don't know, but before now, if I talk before I even land, God will answer my prayer. You became used to God. You can just walk up and talk and God will hear you and you go back and sleep. Eh? You became used to God. Some of us will fast for seven days for a particular matter. Eh? You will have time to fast for seven days. And you can even create 30 minutes. 30 minutes to give God thanks for what he did for you. I am an, I am an etope. For the next seven days, from Monday to Sunday, I'm going to be in church to be praying. No problem. But the day you get that answer, even 30 minutes to return back to the same place. I said, thank you Lord for what you did for me. Uni Yegaba. You are so busy. You are I am an etope. This is our problem. You find out that now, I think we are all guilty, right? It's a problem. That's why the next prayer, the answers may not come again. The next prayer you prayed, the answer... Show 
gratitude. When you show gratitude, you honor God. When I live here every Wednesday, no matter how tired I am, the same place I knelt down to pray before leaving the house, I have to go back there and thank him for the service. No matter how tired, no matter how weak, no matter how hungry, I will still go back to that same place and kneel down and thank him before doing any other thing. People of God, let's be very vigilant that we don't allow pride to creep into our lives and rob us of the future. Because pride will rob you of the future. I don't know many of us need to hear this. You don't deserve anything from God. You don't merit anything from God. Are you hearing me? When telling people about goodness and blessing, don't tell them of how good you are. <laughs> are you hearing me? Tell them of how merciful God is. Because if to be by goodness and righteousness, such man is not born yet. We are completely unmerited and undeserving. That's why you must show gratitude for everything you receive from God. Everything. You know the book of Exodus chapter 33 verse 19? Exodus 33 verse 19. Let's read together. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. And will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. And will show mercy on whom. You don't have because you do anything. No. Are you hearing me? Somebody said, don't hate a man God loves. You. <laughs> don't hate a man God loves. You will get what we got. Oh, this man is very cruel. He's very wicked. He's very this. That is your business. He can still be God's favorite. Like David. <laughs> God says, I will show mercy to whomever. I want to show mercy on him. And be gracious to whomever. I'll be gracious on him. Then it's not your business. Sometimes when I pray, I say, Father, hope I'm part of the people you are showing grace to. <laughs> Because I know it's not by merit. Hope I'm part of people that are showing mercy to. I'm part of people that are showing grace. Mm, I want to be part of whatever the case is. So this gives us no room for boasting and bragging. It means it is mercy and what? And grace. Then all you owe God is gratitude. And when you show him that gratitude, it means you honor him. Matthew chapter 5 verse 45. Matthew 5 45. That ye may be the children of your father which is in heaven. For he maketh the son to rise on the evil and on the good. And send the rain on the just and the unjust. You don't merit anything. I mean, you are not better than anybody. When he sends rain, he sends rain to everybody. Both the good, the just, and the unjust. My point is that we have no room to brag or boast that we did this for God to do this. That is because you know how to pray. You see, when you recount to what God has done for you, you have strength to forge ahead. When you recount to what God has done for you, you know that what you are seeing now is little. Because your testimony will tell you, ah, look at how far you have come this happened 20 years ago. God helped you. This happened 10 years ago. This happened 15 years. This happened 10 years ago. So now, you think that God will, God will leave you now? He said, I will never leave nor forsake you. God has been so merciful. Don't fail giving God thanks because we have this issue. As I leave this place, return back. Go back to that your room. Go back to that same spot. Kneel down the same way and tell him what? Don't be in a haste. Don't be in a haste. All you got came from God. All you have and all you shall have will still come from him. You did not come into this world with anything. 
That's why the day you die, you only go back with what you came with, which is just your body and you. That's all. Praise the Lord. So we don't see people that are people that honors God. Either to God or to man. Don't give anybody arrogantly. Either to man or to God. Don't do what? Don't do that. Oh. If you don't want to give to anybody, leave it. Are you hearing me? May they talk, you know. May they come out. We don't do what? Because I think someone I'm frank, you know, okay? You may think you're doing the right thing, but you're actually doing the wrong thing, and it becomes a mockery. The manner by which you give matters so much. Are you hearing me? Even if I give someone that is a lay privilege, make sure the giving goes with consolation. Don't worry. All shall be well. Everything's going to be fine, okay? Just use this and support. Ah. That is it. It shows humility. You think you are better than the person you give to? Imagine you giving to him and doesn't collect from you. That day you will know that ah, it's not like that. So don't consider yourself to be better than who collects from you. Are you hearing me? The says it's better to give than to do what? But we must do it in what? Humility. Gratitude and honor. I believe this word have entered your heart today. And it has to become an integral part of you. Hallelujah. The bottom line is show gratitude and show God honor. May God bless his word in Jesus Christ's name.